Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. A very exciting one today because it's the first time that I'm gonna get on Charlie properly. You've only seen him in my horse shopping video. Charlie's my newest horse. He's an X-Race horse, he's six years old and he's been at mine for the last, how long have you been here for? Three, four weeks? Just sort of chilling out, coming down from life being a racehorse. He's also enormous, look at him. He's gotta be at least 17.1. I've had his back checked because he didn't move particularly well. So I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing seriously wrong with him before I pressed on. And he got the all clear on Wednesday. And so today's the first opportunity I've really had to ride him properly. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> get any of these Cavallo Trek boots on him because he is barefoot as well but I think he might just find it a bit more enjoyable if he's got boots on. Now these boots, anyone that knows me will know that I didn't like them one bit when I first got them um, because I thought they looked ridiculous and I thought it's just not what I'm used to but actually they are a bit of an inconvenience to put on but it saves you getting your horses <laughs> shod and I find arranging the farrier to come that's an inconvenience as well so I'm a big fan of having horses barefoot if they can cope with it controversial opinion I know but I just feel like horseshoes were invented so long ago they've not really progressed no one's looked at actually could this be done in a better way? And all I know is, is that Billy had navicular quite badly when he had shoes on. I pulled his shoes off two and a half years ago and he's not been lame since. Now I've not x-rayed him, so I don't know what's going on with the navicular bone, but his performance and his general happiness and demeanor, I wouldn't put shoes on him again, unless I had to. We pretty much always jump on a surface nowadays, so it's not like we need studs. But then if I did want to jump on grass, I'd just get the farrier out, put some shoes on with some stud holes, and then I'd take them back off as soon as I've finished. So it's not like once you've not got shoes on, you can never have them on again. That's my little ramble about my little booties. They look silly, but the horses like them. Blimey, you're a tall little boy. I don't know what to expect as I've never really ridden him properly before um, and I know from speaking to people at the racing yard that he can be a little bit of a cheeky boy. I mean he's had a few people off. Apparently he squeals and then he whips round and tries to get you up the side door. I'm completely by myself tonight apart from baby Dill who I have tried every attempt to get him to use a phone to dial 999 in case of an emergency i'm yet to be successful in achieving that though you're still a useless little boy aren't you so i think i might just ride him in the field and just see how we go he doesn't trot that he really does not trot apparently he used to and i've seen him trotting around my field with billy but i tried to trot him on the lounge a few days ago and that's why I got the back lady out because he was just, there was something funny about his movement. I didn't like the look of it. So I just thought I'd get his pelvis checked um, and everything checked. But he's had the all clear. So it is just a case of maybe he's been a bit sore from racing. and He's just been trying to avoid putting weight in certain places. So what now he's had an easier couple of months or six weeks at least. He should find it a little bit easier, but it's something that we'll need to work on slowly. I suppose the only goal that I want to achieve is just having a nice, respectable ride. I want him just to listen to my aids and be a good boy, behave nicely. I'm absolutely putting a neck strap on though. Not a chance am I riding him without one. Not a chance, Charlie stirrups down a couple of holes just so I've got a bit more leg in case I need it. I don't think he's seen a mounting block before either so this will be interesting. Wish me luck.
one thing I perhaps should have accounted for was that he's being really well behaved but he's just not used to birds flying out of trees and I mean there was a pigeon in a tree right above our head and I thought I was gonna die. The only thing he's doing that I could put a fault to is he looks at something and he either tries to whip round or he just stops and won't walk on um, and I'm asking him to walk on and if he ignores me then I just make him stand for a very long time until he's bored and he wants to walk on and then I'll ask him again and he'll do it and he gets packed. Um, I just, I'm by myself. <laughs> what is my hair doing? I'm by myself so I can't afford to be a hero, force him to do things. I've got to just be a bit more realistic about what I can achieve by myself. We're looking good over here. Yes, we are a good boy. I wish I had better footage of that. He's just been trotting around the field and actually quite a nice trot. A nice extended trot rather than a little walking on hot coals trot. I'm really pleased with that. It's amazing what a little bit of time off can do them. What a good boy. <laughs> Although I was trotting him on the right rein because I thought I'm going to get ahead of this. I'm going to work the right rein a little bit harder because all of the others have been very predominantly favouring their left rein. So I was trotting him around on the right rein and up in that top corner up there, he, I don't know if he did spook or whether he was pretending to spook, but he whipped round. Luckily my stirrups are so long. So yes, talking about you. So uh, it wasn't the end of the world, but I thought, oh, if I'd have been in a racing saddle, I'd have probably come straight off then. I am very tempted to take him for a hack and just see what he's like leaving these three behind. Cause they were causing some distractions early on. They nearly killed me. Baby Dill's also nearly killed me jumping out the hedge. So I might just take him down the lane. If I can get him to the bottom of the track, I think I'll have no problems, but I think he's gonna get a little bit of the way down here and think, oh, I'm leaving my boys. You know what boys are like? They don't wanna leave their friends, do they? Well, we've been halfway, we've just turned round. I was very cautious not to let him whip round when I turned him round. And he's been so good. Why, this is very blurry, but I can only do what I can do. When he whinnies, it's bloody terrifying. It just sounds like a death rattle and you just know what's coming, but he's not done anything that bad. It just feels like he's going to. Dill did come with for moral support. <laughs> Just thought we'd do a triple whammy. He's having a little walk around the menage now. He's not seen the mirrors before, but he's been very good. Yes. Those are called poles, Charlie. You'll be seeing more of them. around the field I took him on a little hack and I took him in the school for literally only five minutes most importantly my neighbours came and we were having a little natter and I was literally just sat on him for at least five ten minutes just gossiping as you do and there was traffic coming and going and ponies coming and going and he was really good he just stood still took it all in his stride so that's the main criteria met I just need him to stand still whilst I have a little natter If I can get him up this track and survive, I will be one very happy lady. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Water buckets. Hey, scary. <laughs> he's acting like he's been to the moon and back and everyone should have missed him. We've been gone about 20 minutes. Get a grip. with that. I mean there were times where I did feel like he was going to explode like a bottle of pop. I 
I've had so many comments from neighbours being like, that's a big horse. <laughs> yes, it is. He terrifies me. It's a big horse to be messing around, that's for sure. If you're that big, you've got to be as good as gold because I get a little bit scared otherwise. Right, I think we'll give you a little feed now, Charlie, and put you back in the field. Mm. Look at Baby Dill on the muck heap. Yes, king of the castle. Yep, that's it. <laughs> well, that was so successful. We'll put the little boy in the field. I was going to give him his dinner in the stables. And I thought, actually, do you know what? He'd probably prefer to go back out with his friends and they can all eat dinner together as they would normally. So that's what we'll do, Charlie boy. I can't tell you how pleased I am that I didn't die. If I had half a brain, I would have put a body protector on. But I don't actually own one, which is terrible, isn't it? I have forgotten to put his fly mask on, but I will go and get that when I do your dinners. But for now, be free, little one. Good job. Well done, everybody. Dinner's going to be five minutes, okay? Can you wait that long? Getting ambushed. We live to fight another day, baby Dill. Isn't that good news? Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.